Okay, sorry for the interruption. Like I was saying, part B asks you to write the overall e reaction, which is really just asking you for to combine these elementary steps and make sure it adds up to a balanced equation that makes sense, okay? So similar to like what we did with Hess's law, all right? You're just canceling out things that appear on both sides. You're combining things that are on the same side. So ultimately, we'd have 2O3 gas produces 3O2 gas, okay? And that's the actual reaction for what's occurring, all right? Um, the elementary steps just show you how it's occurring. It shows you that first ozone breaks down into O2 and an oxygen atom, and then ozone collides with another oxygen atom to make an additional O2, okay? Um, and then the next question it asks is to identify the intermediates, which the notes did not cover, all right? Um, the intermediates are um, any substances that get made in one elementary process and used in a different elementary process, okay? So the O that we canceled out, it got made in the first step, it got used up in the second step, so that makes that the intermediate, okay? Um, so just be aware of that. Um, okay, do me a favor. Try practice exercise two, all right? See if you can um, answer those questions, all right? The, um, I'll post the answer key so on a separate sheet so that you can see whether or not you did it correctly. But try practice exercise two on that same page so that you know if you're doing it right, okay? All right, now what we're gonna do is we're going to go to sample exercise 13, which is on page 595. And it says, if the following reaction occurs in a single elementary reaction, predict its rate law, okay? So I'm gonna erase what we have up here, okay? Um, and the reaction is H2 gas plus Br2 gas produces 2HBr gas, okay? And they want you to predict the rate law, all right? So again, um, it tells you to assume that this is a single elementary process. So what that means is there are no additional steps to this. Like, this happens exactly the way it looks. So you would write the rate law just like you've been used to, where you would write it like this, okay? Um, and, you know, it's very possible that that's how that actually occurs, all right? Now, keep in mind, when we write rate laws, we're basing it off theoretical information. So if you read, um, if you read the rest of that sample exercise, it says we're assuming that it occurs in a single elementary step. So this is the rate law based on that assumption. But really, if we do an experiment and try to find the rate law experimentally, the experiment will show a different rate law for this reaction. So what you can determine experimentally versus what you can determine um, theoretically sometimes wind up being different, okay? Um, also try practice exercise two on page 596 as well, okay? And I will post the key for that too so you can see if you're doing it right.